Welcome back to the show. Hashtag Magna on air. Magna search group TV. This is big game hunters. We've got Jason Berard, my co-host. Rory McMillan. Rory, what is on the dock for today? How are we going to start people's week off on the right foot? It's Monday. Happy Monday. Today, we're going to be talking about resumes. What makes a kick-ass resume? What makes a terrible resume? How, when you send your resume to a hiring manager, that's going to get them excited. We're here to bring that to you on Jason's show, Big Game Hunters. The worst part about your resume, I know that the thing that you think about is updating it, right? Like updating your resume is one of the most Nightmare. dreadful tasks yeah, yeah. that anyone has to Nobody face. wants to update their resume. Nobody <laughs> wants to update their resume. Roy, what makes a good These resume? These things, we see them all the time. <laughs> we get sick of seeing them. What makes a good resume and what makes a terrible resume? Well, what first of all, what makes a bad, why don't we start with what makes a bad resume? Sure. We hear this every single day, candidates asking us, can you help us work on your resume? I'm not, I'm not getting uh, I'm not getting any hits. I'm not getting any callbacks. You know, something's obviously missing. And we're here to bring this to you today on uh, Big Game Hunters. Um, the first thing is there's so many spelling mistakes and grammar errors. You cannot have a resume with spelling mistakes and grammar errors. First thing the hiring manager is going to do is read that resume or skim through that resume. They say two or three mistakes, delete in the oh. garbage. It just doesn't work. I, I, I will share a story with you. Obviously, I'll keep it <laughs> confidential. I had an engineer and she was an amazing candidate uh, come through for a job that was paying anywhere from 130 to 160K. Oh, I remember that. With a very reputable company. And I thought she was an amazing candidate. And on the objective statement, which is a whole other thing that we're going to talk about, it <laughs> said, I have very strong interpersonal skills, and I kid you not. Skills. And communication skills, I think no, no. it had to as well. Skills, <laughs> I kid you not, was S K I L L. Just wait for it. Z. I saw that, and Woo. my jaw absolutely dropped. I'm like, Woo. I can't, I can't, I can't put this person through. That's right. Straight to straight to delete, uh, trash, whatever it is. Oh. Um, you know, if there's spelling mistakes, grammar errors uh, on your resume. You ain't. You definitely ain't gonna oh, get a callback. Totally. So the first thing you gotta do is you can't just rely on the spell check, right? No, spell check's not enough. Get your no. friends, get your family members to relook over your resume, double check it 50, 60 times. Make sure that there's no errors because the first thing that's going to happen is straight to the delete box. Second point is sloppy formatting in fonts. You cannot have sloppy formatting. The resume can't be all over the place. The fonts can't be, you know, some bigger fonts, some smaller fonts. You know, I get the picture. You want to make things stand out, but make it clean, make it precise. Sloppy fonts and formattings is just going to confuse people. Yeah, like if you just have one of those resumes that's like all left indented, maybe a few different sizes, like just forget it. You want to have at least your title uh, up there in the middle. Big and bold. Big and bold. On the left side, you may want to always want to make sure that you have, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the more, you know, what makes a good <laughs> resume. We'll save this for the for the terrible stuff, but uh, what else? Too short, just plain ugly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one pagers, oh, oh, you're killing me. You're oh. killing me on the one pagers. Yeah. We need to see you outline some of your accomplishments, maybe some of the challenges that you Dude, I've seen worse than one page. I've seen half page. I know, I've seen it too. I've Half page. Too. We need to make sure that it has at least one to two solid pages and of content. Go, and don't go 15 pages too. Let me just say that. No. And that's going to lead me to my next point. Too long. <laughs> don't make your resume too long. We don't want 15, 15 page resumes. We Snoozer. don't want to see five page resumes. We don't even want to see four page resumes plus a cover letter. It's just too much. Yeah. You know, you got to make sure that you emphasize the value on your resumes and key precise points that's going to pique the hiring manager's interest or going to pique the recruiter's interest. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be clear, precise, bold, and make sure that your resume isn't too long. Yeah. You know, there's been resumes out there where we've seen cover letters. We've seen the statistics about what they've done, where they've worked, and they've outlined every single job on their resume all the way from where they're currently working down to when they worked at like McDonald's. Right, I understand the importance of the McDonald's and being- Actually, yeah, you know, people actually see McDonald's with the training and everything like that. But it's pretty- <laughs> But going for an executive yeah, position, yeah, you don't yeah, need to put it, you no. don't need to put uh, McDonald's on your resume. You're not even looking years. at- 15 years. 15 years. Maybe a bit more for the senior executive. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But most of that will be collaborated in, uh, yeah. you know, combined in one job position that they're working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lies and half truths. Yeah, is the, another ring. Well, the big thing about the the one. Don't thing, lie on your resume, guys. No, because if the the uh, this is a this is a very true fact. If you lie on your resume, and they catch it three years down the road, four years down the road, they may not, but they have absolutely full right to fire you without cause because you lied on your resume and they hired you under false tense or false uh, whatever it is. False, yeah, false truth. yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, you want to be honest. You want to make sure the information inside your resume is uh, is correct and accurate. Inaccurate information is only going to bite you in the ass. 
Uh, it's going to come back to you. Uh, oh, yeah. We've seen it happen time Ooh, and time again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what we do here extensively at Magna Search is really qualify their backgrounds, qualify their experience. One, we qualify their education. You won't believe how many people on their resume put misleading information if they have a degree, if they have a diploma. Some of our clients require, you know, that candidate to have that actual designation. I've even seen a professional engineer put PNG, don't even have it yet. I also want to say that if this is maybe my own, my own personal thing, but I think it's actually for most employers as well. If you've only done two years of university and then you never went back, leave, you don't have a degree and leave it out of your resume because my sort of my flags go on when I see that and I say, well, why did you stop? Or, you know, did you just throw in the towel yeah. when a challenge came your way? Just don't even mention in it. In process, maybe put yeah. like in process or, or maybe it just didn't interest you. Maybe school yeah. wasn't for you, but that's okay. Just leave it out of the resume. Leave it out of your resume. Yeah. Sketchy job dates too. What makes what for another bad regimen? What, what do you mean by that? Sketchy job dates. Like one person that, uh, you know, a guy worked here for a month, two months. Then he goes from uh, a contract job uh, to a, a to another oh, contract job. Oh, oh, oh. Um, and job then, hopper. Yeah, not so much a job hopper, but when you look at the dates on a resume, like you say you have uh, a guy that's working a permanent full-time job, been there for six, seven years. Next thing you know, he goes to a contract job. Yeah right? Or he's only been at this job for three to four months. Then he goes to the next job, five to six months, seven to eight months. It really depends on the industry, but we see so many different resumes with all these sketchy, sketchy, misleading information. And it just doesn't make any sense why you would leave this company to go do this. And when you start talking to these people, you know, they're, 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 they tell you one thing, they meet another and the transparency just isn't there. The, 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 the most important thing to take away from what Roy just said is that those uh, when your resume is outlaid like that and a hiring manager is looking at it, they if there's not a proper explanation of why you've sort of jumped a bit, they're automatically automatically going to think that you are a job hopper. And I'm going to tell you right now, if, if that portrays in your resume, you'll never get an interview because the last thing someone wants to do is hire someone uh, with the risk of them moving 15 times within a year yeah. because the cost per hire is costly, but it's even more expensive if you hire someone and they don't last long term. Like it's super expensive it's just, for a company. It's so never, never going to work. They're not going to take the risk and you only have one chance to impress someone, right? And so. another point, which you believe it or not, that happens all the time is people leave out their contact information or they don't update their contact information. They put the wrong phone number on there. They put the mistakes in their email address, yep. their ad address has changed and they're applying for a job. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Actually, you were never going to get a call back if your phone number's wrong. My email changed when I uh, when I was in with Magna Search Group and uh, this was almost never meant to be because of it. Uh, <laughs> being honest. Hey, that, that's yeah, it, right? It's, the it's only true. way you got in contact with true. us because you followed up, yeah. you were consistent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You sent uh, in-depth email saying why you wanted to work for our company, work for our organization. I seen the enthusiasm, I seen the hunger. Next thing you know, bring him in. He's here, he's ready. Okay, one more point on the on the sort of negative side and then we'll get into sort of what makes the resume good. I think redundant information you need to leave out. For us, objective yeah. statements, don't even worry about them. Your objective statement is to get the job. That's why the hiring manager is looking at your yeah. resume. You don't need to see, oh, it's to be employed as a project manager for this company. Not at all. They already know that. You can include a little point in your email, but yeah. objective statements, not the first thing you want them to see. What is the first thing that you want them to see? Skills. Yeah. The first thing is, you know, your name, uh, your address, your email, uh, along with your designations and your skills right under that. What are your skills? What can you do and what can you bring to this company? Yeah. Not my objective is my objective is to be uh, a sales manager within your company. Like, no. dude, like no. that. No one, no one reads that. Nobody no. cares about that. Not like, that's, that's not showing initiative. Not that's not showing value. And that's not emphasizing your skills, which ultimately that's why companies hiring you what is that one thing that this company needs to help grow their business that's why or product whether it be production whether you're a coder developer manufacturing expert sales guy whatever that may be you know you got to emphasize your skills it's got to be up there that's why a great resume the first thing that we see is like an eight to ten bullet point highlighting of your experience so you know if it's a sales job x amount of years selling uh x amount of years achie achieving or surpassing quota uh any certifications da 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 da, da. did this 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 and that First 10 points, right? That's the yeah. first thing you want to see because- Name, points, key information. You open a resume and that's the first thing you see. You want to get them excited so they continue to read. Otherwise they go, next, next. Next, next, next. next. So, okay, now we're on the topic of what makes a great resume. Well, we started already, right? Summarizes value, <laughs> right? Summarizes value. You got to communicate confidence, right? You got to show and highlight your greatest accomplishments, what you've done at that company. In short, clean, precise, 
outlines the key things that you've done. How has it contributed? To, how have you contributed to improving uh, improving the company's bottom line? How have you contributed to saving the company money? These are all thing, these are all things that do you want to be emphasizing on your resume. Um, shows revenues, profit improvement, cost initiatives that you've implemented. It needs to be name of the company, the dates that you worked there. You so much don't need to really put the months, but mostly the years that you worked there and clean, precise onto the next job. And as Jason says, you know, you don't want to see 15, 16 different jobs with bulks and bulks and bulks of information. Because to be quite honest with you, ourselves, as well as companies and organizations, they're not reading this. It's just, it, it, it's, it's, Time. It's, 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 it's a matter time. of time. There's companies like, you know, Hootsuite, for example, they get a hundred applicants per job. Hundreds. They just don't have the capacity to actually analyze each resume full and through no. and through. So it's one of those things where you look at it and the more excited you get, the more stuck to that resume that you're yep. going to be. And maybe you put them in the left pile, which is the call pile rather than the right pile, which this one will be much more stacked at all given times than yeah. the left pile. You got one chance. But the greatest the accomplishments on, right? are key. Right. If you ain't out, if you ain't outlining your greatest accomplishments, what you've done, it's like you working for me. Right. What's going to pique my interest? I was a senior recruiter working at this company. Well, who cares? So was so was the next guy. Yeah. Right. But what how, what I've done is, while I was working at this company, this is what I did. This is what this is this is what I exceeded at. This is what I excelled in. Yeah. You know, these are how much cut clients I brought into the company. This is the amount of revenue. You know, this is how I set the pace every single day at the company. Like these are things that we care about, and, right? These are things that hiring managers care you about. You know, I think there's gonna be a change. Maybe maybe there already is, but like I don't think years of experience always apply in the sense that like no. you want three years of selling experience, but what if you have one person with one year of selling experience that did more than someone with three years of selling <laughs> experience, right? Like, totally. Totally outlining your totally. accomplishments, maybe your challenges, your must, learning, your must. Mis- Honestly, if you want to get creative, put some of your mistakes down. One of my yeah. mistakes here was I, I burned a relationship with a client immediately because I didn't know what I was doing, right? Yeah. But I learned from it. And I would put that in my resume, be full yeah. transparent. These are the mistakes I made, right? This is what I learned. And this, this is why is I don't what make I learned, them anymore. And this is why you don't make them anymore. So this is what we want to see. Yeah. When we when we are dealing with candidates every single day, we want to see this stuff. This is what's going to make us call you mm. back. Next thing, what makes a great resume? Professional language and vocabulary. Yeah. You want to it's watch it. The, you don't want to have too many five dollar words, but like you know, <laughs> include a five dollar word here and there, and make sure that you know people can put see some that. bullet points in there. And try to communicate your enthusiasm on paper. I know that sometimes yeah. that can be tough, but but you have to also understand that like when I'm looking at this, and you would be a potential employee for my company, I want to see that you bring that enthusiasm and that excitement as well as the experience. So I want to know that you'd be a good culture fit as well, right? Yeah, have strong keywords. You know, make oh, sure yeah. that you emphasize your keywords. Depending on what position that you're uh, applying for, is you want to make sure that your keywords are in there. Your your skills are in there because when uh, hiring managers and ourselves look through resumes, you know, Command F, what are we searching oh, for? Always. What do we I'm have? Like we're, we're, we're constantly using, we're constantly using that key, right? It's Command yeah. F, we're searching for those keywords. We're trying to pick out, you know, does this candidate meet the qualifications our client is looking for? Can he bring value? What has he done? And uh, when did you last work on those positions? Don't just put them in one section at the, either the bottom of your resume, put it in relevant to what the, uh, you know, the position that you're applying for. So yeah. if you, if you're applying for a position, say, um, you know, Unix system administrator or, or a full stack uh, uh, engineer, you don't want to just put your, um, you know, keywords down at the bottom of your resume. You want to put it in the most last to most recent before you're applying for that next job. So that's going to peak the hiring managers and say, oh, hey, listen, this person has actually done this recently. Yeah. You know, not, not it, down at your 15, 16 last keep job. Keep it precise and to the point. Even if you've touched on it, put it in there. You want to make sure that you get the phone call so you can emphasize the value, your commitment, you're willing to learn, yeah, and that like, you're willing to show well, you know that employer, that potential hire, that you you know you're willing to take initiative and make things happen. Make yeah, things like happen. like precisely to the point. So like one of my clients right now needs a scripting language of PowerShell. There's very few people that actually oh. work with it, and actually one of the candidates that has worked with it doesn't have it in his resume, so then they automatically yeah. question it. But I know that he's worked with it because he has said it and showed it in some of his experience. So make sure that even if it's just the smallest thing, put it in there, yeah. um, and make sure that they can find those keywords because sometimes that's what they're looking for as well um and then the next point is you know the structure like how should you structure precise uh, and to the point and then how should you structure your resume in terms of the formatting in terms of the fonts structuring you know you have like we said earlier as you have your you know your name your address um your telephone number everything accurate skills underneath skills underneath the uh um you know your contact information your name and then you go right into your synopsis of your education yeah, yeah. So right, I, where I, you've worked, yeah, what I, you've done, I like name to and contact skills, details, education, 
and then working experience. And then on your working experience, you want to have obviously like big and bold is the the, the employee or sorry, the employer under that. You Put want, them up front, big and bold. Yeah. And then under that with yeah. maybe a little bit smaller with still bold is uh, maybe underlined is your position. And then beside that, you want to have your dates, the years that you worked there. And then you want to have your 10 bullet points. Yeah. Career synopsis, outline your key requirements that you've done, but not all of them. No, Keep it precise. Like 10 points, right? So yeah, 10 yeah. points, the years that you've worked there. Um, and make sure that that all formatting looks the same, all the fonts the same. Colors, I mean, if you want to include them up top, maybe, but not throughout it. Like if you have like blue and black, it just doesn't look good. Just keep it black and white and professional. Um, and uh, I would also use templates. You know, I know Google templates has a lot. And There's so many templates yeah, out there that you can yeah, do. Yeah, or, yeah. or look into a professional resume writing service. That's really going to jumpstart you to get a lot yeah, of cool Yeah, we do backs. that here as well. We've done a, we've done many resume writings. Uh, people will come to us and say, you know, well, how, how do I just get someone to, how do I give this to you guys and just get me into the interview, get me into attention. So um, below the career synopsis, you also want to make sure before we don't, uh, before we end the episode, you want to make sure that we do the education and professional development that yeah. has to go under there way you know what what school you went to what grade did you get um, you know what GPA. was your des what would your GPA. what was your designation I actually look at stuff like that oh yeah yeah all the time GPA, is this guy GPA. intelligent is this guy smart and you know if he's going for a senior job that requires him to have a certain designation sometimes my hiring manager will say listen you know was this guy was, was, was this guy setting the pace in school what was his grades like yeah. Right. If it's there, I don't have to go back to the candidate. It's just going to streamline the process to make things even faster, get things moving even yeah, quicker. Yeah, that's the big thing about your resume. You want it to streamline the process. You don't want them to have to call you to ask questions about things that might be missing. You want them to call you to get the ball rolling. Certifications. Say, like if you're going for a sales job, I want to know what sales certifications you have. I want to know what books you've read. Yeah. I want to know what people you follow, who your mentors are. Yeah. Right. Who's trained you? How have you trained your mind? These are the things that I want to look for. Yeah. You know, uh, on top of, you know, what makes uh, what makes great, if they had great schooling or what their education was, you know, what university they went to. And finally, you know, you always want to put, you know, whether it be references, references uh, underneath, but not all of your references. You know, I'm not telling you list your references. References are available upon request. And uh, just a quick, quick uh, closing value statement of what you know, what value you can bring to that company, why that, why that hiring manager, or why we should pick up the phone and speak with you. I think that's uh, I've, I've read that in a resume. I've actually called back six or seven times. Um, quick little closing statement. You know, this is what I can do. This is what I've done. And this is the value I can bring to your organization. Yeah. Get creative. Get creative. Because you yeah. have one chance at impressing someone. I know that you're looking at your resume and I'm the same way. I think everyone's the same way. When you have to update it, like we said at the start of the show, it is a dreadful process and it's something that no one wants to do. But just remember that that piece of paper, as insignificant as it seems, will be the first impression of you getting a potential interview for landing your dream job or landing a company that you've always wanted to work and for. And you got to stand out, right? you got to set the pace. you got to do something that's going to make you get that call back. At the end of the day, a resume, is a piece of paper that gets sent through email to a hiring manager and they literally look at it for 20, 20 to 30 seconds. I was reading a start online, I think 25 seconds, the average resume gets looked at. What's gonna pique that hiring manager's interest? What's gonna force them to give you a call back, right? Also, big closeout, what we forgot to mention is once you send a resume, always follow up. Follow yeah. up after you send your resume. Did you receive it? Just wanted to make sure that you received my resume. Push until you get a yes or no. Don't just leave Push. it hanging in the hanging Push. there. That's why a lot of people go unsuccessful in their job searches. Uh, but this is Big Game Hunters. This is Monday. Happy Monday to you all. Hashtag Magna on air. Magna search group TV. Jason Berard. Rory, Rory McMillan. McMillan. Closing out the show. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.